I'm sure we all have that one kid in our class that is a bit off. The guy who stares a bit too intensely, seldom speaks, and was treated like he was invisible. Well, I knew someone like that, and he sat next to me too, to make things worse. His name was Andrew, and he was a really weird kid, always doodling strange things in his notes, and muttering under his breath. Even the teachers usually left him alone in class, not wanting to talk to him. I don't know what got over me one day. I must have been off my medication that day, otherwise, I wouldn't have done something that stupid. What did I do? Well, I tried to talk to the kid. He dropped his pencil one day while doodling on the break, and I picked it up. Before grinning at him and introducing myself, Hey, uh, you're Andrew, right? I said, trying to sound as friendly as possible. I'm Aubrey, nice to meet you. Andrew stayed quiet for almost a minute, and I thought he wasn't going to reply at all. Well, the kid never spoke, and nobody ever spoke to him. So, it must have been strange that someone talked to him. I simply placed the pencil on his table and returned to revising for the next class. You can imagine my surprise when I heard a quiet voice from my side. Thank, thank you. It was Andrew. I looked at him, and he was off doodling again. I wasn't sure what came over me, but I promised myself to start befriending him from that point on. I wasn't sure why, maybe because he reminded me of myself a few years back. You see, I used to be bullied. Of course, as I grew up and started to stand up for myself, the bullying stopped. But still, I knew what it meant to be nothing. I guess I felt pity. After deciding to befriend Andrew, every single day I would greet him. In the beginning, Andrew would avoid me, but after a few weeks of attempting to talk to him, he started to greet me back, and soon enough, he would greet me first. I would be lying if I said I wasn't happier with him. Yes, I had friends, like you, but I joined my friend group much later than the rest, so I always felt like I didn't belong with them. Andrew, on the other hand, made me feel like I belonged with someone. Like Andrew needed me. It was a good feeling, to say the least. At least, it was at the beginning. Things started to get strange. When Andrew wouldn't leave me alone at all. To add to it all, he would get violent if I ever tried to ask him to leave me alone. Even now, as I'm writing this, there are bruises on my wrist from when he grabbed me and started to pull me along with him. Andrew was dangerous. I wasn't sure how I didn't notice that before. He gave off all the wrong vibes, yet I ignored them and decided to hang out with him. I guess the feeling of loneliness brought me closer to him. So, why didn't I listen to my mind when it was telling me to leave Andrew? Report him for the bruises he would give me. After a little bit, we had fallen into a routine. I would wake up, walk to school with Andrew, have lunch with Andrew, go home with Andrew, study with Andrew, and walk him back to his house, rinse and repeat. That was the routine we had for months. I was completely isolated from my old friends. I wasn't allowed to see them anymore. If I even tried to, Andrew would threaten me. 
He would threaten me with either hurting me or himself. I always hated it when he threatened hurting himself. That was the scariest. Why? Because I knew he would go through with it. Something was wrong with Andrew. No. There were many things wrong with Andrew. I should have stayed away from him. Maybe then I would have been able to stop the tragedy that happened next. That day started like any other. Andrew came over to my house and I was ready to head out with him. I gave a hug to my little brother and I was off. Let's go out today, Andrew suggested. A new cafe opened. It's going to be my treat. Usually, I would agree, not wanting to anger him. But today, I couldn't. Why? Because it was a very special day. It was my friend Nico's birthday, and I wanted to at least get him a gift. It was going to be easy, I said to myself. I was going to give an excuse, buy a gift, give Nico the gift, and then return to Andrew. The guy would be none the wiser. How wrong I was. Sorry, I'm sort of busy for an hour or two today. But after that, we totes can go to the cafe. I said, trying to hide my cheery tone. I was happy about the plan I made. I thought I would be able to succeed with it. What? Almost immediately, it was clear that Andrew was not satisfied with what I had just told him. That wasn't good. I need to buy something. After that, we can hang out. I tried to excuse myself, but Andrew gripped my hand tightly. He was not letting go. Then I'll come with. That's okay with you, right? Andrew said, giving me a chilling smile. He knew, didn't he? He knew I was going to give a gift to someone he told me to stay away from. Um, can't I have a little bit of alone time? You're suffocating. But I kept that last part to myself. I knew how he would react if I told that to him. No. Andrew's reply was short, but it was clear what he meant. Maybe if I would have been smart, I would have given up the idea. Then, Nico would still be here with us. He would be okay. After that, the day went on as normal. Andrew and I kept hanging out. The guy, like always, showed off his doodles, explaining each of them. As I listened, not caring too much, it's not like he was a good artist. The doodles looked more like scribbles than anything else. Well, not like I was much better. School came to an end and Andrew headed off to the bathroom, telling me to stay still and wait for him. I didn't. This was the chance I was looking for. I ran off the moment I thought he was gone. I thought things would be alright. I mean sure, I would get yelled at by Andrew when he'd return, but that was alright. That was completely fine. Right? I got the gift I wanted and arrived back at school. Nico had after class activities. He usually stayed at his club room, even when the club was over, to clean up and take care of everything. He was just that kind of guy. When I arrived at the club room, the first thing that I noticed was the stench. The horrid stench that came from the room. The second thing that I noticed was the wet sound coming from the room, like something or someone was stabbing a juicy fruit over and over again. I guess I already knew what had happened, as I had my phone in my hand ready to dial 911. I was always a paranoid individual like that. Slowly opening the door, I was horrified by the sight before me. There, 
On the ground lay the headless body of Nico. On the table was his head. Andrew stood over it, stabbing it over and over again, muttering something under his breath, so quiet it was inaudible. Even now that I was in the room, I wanted to yell, to scream, to run, but I couldn't. I was just blank. I guess at the moment, my brain couldn't process what was going on. I just stared. I stared and stared and stared before a small laugh escaped from my lips. As I fell to the ground, holding myself tightly, digging my nails into my arms, I don't remember what happened next. I guess I was overwhelmed and blacked out. Currently, I'm sitting at the police station. I'm using my laptop to write this story. I needed to write this down so I would be able to calm down. From what I heard, a student had already called the police before I had arrived. The policeman found me on the ground, just quietly laughing to myself as I continued to dig my nails into my arms. Andrew was nowhere to be found. All I know is that Nico died because of me. And I'm afraid Andrew is still out there. I'm lucky that after questioning me and the lack of evidence, I am currently not a suspect. But God, I'm so scared. I don't want to end up like Nico. I don't know what to do. Should I run? Should I hide? What could I even do to survive this? I need help and advice as fast as possible. Please.